<laughs> George is laughing behind us. <laughs> is she the culprit? No, no, George is not the culprit. You call me Bex, but no, not other than that, no. Okay. People they might, they might do behind my back. <laughs> <laughs> Just skip, we're going to get arms across. Yes, hello everyone. Welcome back to Newcastle Fans TV. We are outside of the academy as we are grabbing Becky and several of the girls ahead of this massive, massive game on Sunday at St James's Park where the women are playing on Bradford. The more people that are there, the more that the kind of women's football, Newcastle United women uh, are out there in the media um, being talked about. And it, overall, it would just be absolutely fantastic to try and beat that attendance record again. Murdad's asked for 30,000, so that's definitely a number, a figure that we're trying to push for. Do you reckon we can get 30,000? I don't see why not. 28,000 last time was a massive surprise. Um, I think 22,000 uh, the first time was a big one. But then 28, we didn't think we'd surpass 22 by as much, but we did. So I can't see why we can't get 30. Um, well, the, the way that the league table currently stands, it's going to be an entertaining occasion. We know we need to get goals, we need to keep a clean sheet, so we are going to work hard, extremely hard this week and ensure we put on the performance you all deserve to see. Well, obviously everyone's seen Murdoch's tweet for 30,000, so if we could get that, that would be insane. There's still a lot of play for, let's not forget. Can you tell everybody what's at stake? Yeah, of course. Obviously, it's no secret that we're pushing for promotion this season. So we need all the three points that we can get heading into the last four games. So to have the 12th player on the pitch and the, and the crowd supporting us, cheering us on, would be phenomenal. Do you think we can get the 12 points? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Every game that we go into, three points is the aim, three points is the goal, because that's what we know we need to uh, kind of get what we want at the end of the season. 30,000 plus, uh, you know, Murdad's obviously tweeting about it. If the owners are tweeting about it, I don't see why we can't get there. Um, we've broke records before in the past at St James's Park. I don't see why we can't do it again. There's a lot riding on this game. Let's not forget the league is still up for grabs. Can you fascinate the women go and win all four games? Absolutely. There's no doubt in my mind. I've never even second-guessed it, not even after Sunday's result. Um, we know what we have to do. Um, we, we, I've, you know, I've spoken to Becky and I've spoken to a couple of the girls about this. We were probably in a worse position last season. When, if you think about it that way, and the majority of the girls were here last season, so we know kind of how that felt, and nobody wants to feel like that again. So it definitely gives us that extra. Um, but I've got no doubt in my mind. It's it's absolutely massive. Um, you know, we've given absolutely everything for the past two seasons to try and push for promotion, and we need that crowd behind us again. We're you know we're fighting every single session, every se see us outside in the pouring rain, um, to make sure that we've left absolutely no stone unturned and. We've gone through too much. We've overcome so much to get ourselves into a position to win this league. And I'm determined and confident that we will still do so. Obviously, when the penalty was given against Hull in the 97th minute on Sunday, that, you know, your heart sinks because you just think, oh, this is going to be two points dropped. But I think we've got that now, that passion, even more so if it needed to be there to ensure that we've given everything and we're given everything and more now to make sure that we are winning this league and winning every game comfortably. Oh, dog. Do you have a dog? No. <laughs> Get a dog. Get a dog. Brilliant. Awesome. Dog. Do you have a dog? Three dogs. One cat. Come on, give us the names. Belle, Princess, Cookie, and the cat is called Izzy. What kind of dogs you got? Shih Tzu's. All Shih Tzu's? Yeah. Oh, dog. Do you have any dogs? Uh, we've just our housemates have just bought a dog. Yeah, so it's a bit it's a bit crazy in the house at the minute having an eighteen your uh, working cocker. Yeah, Winston. 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 Yeah, I think he replies more to good boy than anything else, but Winston's the one. Dog, 100%. Do you have a dog? Yeah, two. Give us the names. Ella and Izzy. What kind of dogs are they? Working Cocker Spaniels. Dog. Do you have a dog? I don't, no. Not at the one? minute, but I would like a puppy. Yeah, I get called G, but uh, one that we've caught this season, or one that I've been called, um, is G Lytton. Potty. Yeah, I don't have another nickname other than Potty. Uh, no, just Grace. I think um, Beth Guy sometimes calls us Gracie Beaker from years ago, but <laughs> me, 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 mal, not give a shit. He's, 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 he's seeing that. <laughs> I get Beth Guy. I never get Beth. I never get Bethany. It's the same as us when we talk about you. Yeah, well. I get Beth Guy. No, I don't. It's just, it's always stuck. Um, even when I was a kid, it was always Beth Guy. It was never Beth, Bethany. It was always Beth Guy. It's because like both names are dead short. Yeah, so I get Beth Guy. No, I don't really. I think some, some people call me Bex, but no, not other than that, no. 
Okay. They, they, might, they might do behind my back. <laughs> Ooh, I won't lie, I'm not really a movie person, but we'll go with The Pursuit of Happiness. I did watch a good one at the weekend called Noah on Netflix. That was good. Although I think Shawshank Redemption. Um, probably Toy Story or something like that. Not the original? <laughs> yeah, the original. Oh, good question. Favourite movie? L I've just watched Luther on Netflix, a movie that was really good. So I'd probably go with that, only because it's the most recent. Can you watch it, it's good. Oh, I went to see a really good film, actually, um, over the weekend. New one, Air. Um, it's about Michael Jordan and Nike's partnership. It's really inspiring. Dubai, got to be. Tell me why. Used to live there, grew up there. Um, so I lived there for 10 years, yeah. So wow. it's always my favourite place, place to go back to. I lived in LA for four months and I, I, I love LA. Tell me about LA. Why do it? It's just got everything. It's got city, mountains, beaches. The beaches is just... My soul lights up there. I've been to Miami, so I would imagine it's quite similar. I did go to Florida and university and I thought like Florida was a little bit different to California in terms of culture. Um, I think the California culture, everyone's like quite uplifted and very, <laughs> I don't know, like it's just such a uplifting place. Everyone are very, everyone's very friendly, of course, like in some areas it's difficult. Oh, somewhere hot, anywhere hot on a beach. Egypt. Tell us why. Because I used to go there all the time as a kid growing up and I just love it. It's hot, you know, you get a good tan. Are you still going? Yeah, well, actually, hopefully going this year, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, I'm going to Mexico in the summer, so I'm very excited about that, but best holiday I've been on is probably to St Lucia in the Caribbean. Um, afraid to feel. It's a tough one, that. I like, all, I like all music. Can I give an artist? That's the next one. So I've got to choose a song. Um, great, great, greatest love of all, Whitney Houston. I'm a bit old school. Um, I'm, I'm, a fan, I'm a bit of a fan of Elvis, so that's to be playlist quite a bit. <laughs> I don't have a favourite song, but at the minute I like Cat Burns. She's an artist. Some of her music's really good. I don't have a favourite. Check it out. She is. She's a really good performer, really good singer. But I don't have a favourite song. I do like Sam Fender, and I do like um, Spit of You. Good song. Whoa, uh, Sam Fender. Well, I've given Whitney Houston as the song, so maybe I have to go for Michael Jackson as the artist. Uh, well, probably the same again. Elvis is me, uh, me pre, me pre game go to. My favourite band's Girls Aloud, but my favourite singer, yeah, my favourite singer at the minute is Cat Burns. Daisy said uh, girls allowed as well. Yeah. Last I probably have to go with the Sam Fender at the minute to represent the Geordies. Night out. <laughs> night in. Oh, if you asked us a couple of years ago, we would have said night out, but night in now. Why, why is that yeah, getting there with it. It's, oh, it's always a school night now. <laughs> mm, night in, but day drinking. What do you call it? What do you call like it? day drinking going out during the day. Nice, okay. Georgia's yeah, <laughs> uh, laughing behind us. <laughs> Is she the culprit? No, no, George is not the culprit. Night in, definitely. If you asked me that ten years ago, I might have said night out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you used to play quite a bit of netball. Um, that? I'm all right. Not as good as football. <laughs> um, I'll play any sport. Fascinated with boxing in terms of it's helped me study the mind. But it is a lot about the mind, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But also the mechanics of the body as well, the way the body works. Very much about flow. Um, it allows you to understand emotions, uh, allows you to detach from emotions if you really want to focus on technique. It's sort of like a meditation tool. Uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of all sports. Um, I love watching all sports and I'll, I'll give me hand a go at anything. I used to play hockey in school. Any good at it? Field hockey. I was all right, yeah. I quite like that. I don't play it anymore, but... I'd, I'd play it if I had the opportunity to play it. I like a lot of sports. Um, I like um, watching track and field at the Olympics. I like watching um, the rugby games that have been on TV. I like watching the female netball, so yeah, lots of sports. Well, Barnsley at St James's Park's got to be up there. Um, probably that one, yeah. Yeah, I think the one at St James's in terms of like... feeling that every piece of hard work that I've put in and every sacrifice that I've made 
has very emotional. Um, it made me feel as though my bigger purpose outside of football is going to be achievable. Oh, I think it has to be the one nil over, over over Durham Sustry in front of kind of the home crowd and that icy pitch and that icy pitch. <laughs> there was a lot riding on that game, wasn't there? Yeah, absolutely. I think that kind of was was a, a big moment for us. Everyone was building it up around us, but we had to kind of stay focused and, and we did our job and it was a great a great day. Good question. <coughs> Favourite game? Probably, probably York at home this season, just because it had so much context to me and the way we won, definitely. York at home? Um, oh, quite a few, I think. I think the game at St James's Park, just because of the nature of the actual game itself, I think when we were 1 0 down, you know, walking down that tunnel at half time, it's quite an experience knowing that you're 1 0 down with 28,000 people watching. Um, but having the quality and passion and desire to come back from that 1 0 deficit and win the game 2 1, I think, was just really special. Really uh, close to Beth Guy, um, Aaron Nelson, and Sh Rachel Lee Shorty. <laughs> Everyone, we all we all get along. However, I like helping the young players. Um, I'm all the defenders around you. Yeah, I'm all about helping players. Yeah, I've got I've got a few. Um, obviously, I like to keep the the back four um, in with us. Obviously, you've got the likes of Ellen George as my housemate. Um, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> George is pointing. George is pointing. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely Georgia. Uh, I've known Georgia. No, I've known Georgia since I was 17. Uh, I went to college with Georgia, so Georgia. Um, Shorty. Um, God, who else? <laughs> I can't think. Who else? Um, oh, Ellen. Ellen Packham. Um, I've known Alan Packham since I was 16. Um, so, yeah, I, to be fair, we all get along really well, but the girls that I've known the longest are definitely my closest friends. Yeah, I think all of them. I think, um, you know, I'll predominantly work with Sue come in, our head of women's football. He was in the office with me, and here's kind of all my rants and raves, probably. Um, obviously, Lloyd and the other staff are brilliant, really supportive, and I've got really strong family and friends and coaches at other clubs that, you know, have been absolutely brilliant and you know who your friends are when you lose a game or you draw a game in the last minute and they're the first people to text you to make sure you're all right. I'm joined by Matty, Magpie Channel. Matty, obviously you've been up here watching the last train as well. You've seen a few of the games this season as well. Mm -hmm. Why are we asking so many people to turn out this weekend? It's huge, isn't it? Just to back the team. I mean, I think if we want Newcastle to do well, everyone has to do well, and that's not just the first team. It means the academy, the women's. And let's be honest, if we want to be one of the biggest and best clubs in the world, you need to be competing on all fronts. And for me, that includes hopefully one day, not just the men's being in the Champions League, but the women's as well. Have you have you learned something like, or I'll rephrase it, have you enjoyed going to the women's games? I would say so, I. I mean, we used to go years ago where you'd pay just a couple of quid to go in or you'd be at Kingston Park, so obviously it's great now the position we're in where we get the accredited media passes and stuff, but I still think it's just if you've got new cash in your blood, you want to support them on all fronts. Um, and for me, the last game, gets, it gets better every time I see them. The more we continue to go at Kingston Park, the more I enjoy it every time. I think it's a different sort of match day to the, to the one at St James's for, say, a Saturday in Newcastle United v Man United Men's or whatever, but the Sunday games, I think they're... They were great, they were great out and I, I enjoy them. I think the quality is improving each time. So people who are coming to St James's Park to watch the Lasses for the first time, what are they going to experience then? I think a, a good atmosphere, like a more of a family and Tory orientated atmosphere. Obviously that's why the, the ticket prices are so low to get as many kids there as possible. Um, and they are still going to get entertained. I mean, look at the last game, there was two absolute screamers of goals, wasn't there, from the halfway line and stuff. So you'll see goals, you'll see excitement, you'll see passion as well. Because you've got to remember that a lot of these players are on your cast fans as well. Cool, that was it. And that was Matty from the Magpie Channel. If you want to keep an eye out on uh, Matty, how he's been uh, channeling and keeping an eye on the lasses. He's also done a video up here as well, so go and check him out as well. But uh, Matty, thank you very much. So there you have everybody. Hope you've enjoyed those fun interviews with the lasses and Becky and shots of the training as well. It is absolutely miserable here. It's freezing. The weather is chucking it down, but look... The important thing is we want you to come out. We want you to get a St. James Park this Sunday. It's £3 for an adult. Kids slash concessions only go for a pound. That's nothing. Get yourselves down. What else is going to be doing this Sunday? Get yourselves to St. James's Park. Have a great day out and cheer on the lasses. And I'm sure there'll be plenty of goals at the ground.